Okay, for the other examples that we looked at previously in this section, we only focused on ones that had a positive in front of the x. So now we need to look at one that has a negative, so that way you know how to handle that one. These down here, the amplitude, period, and phase shift, these, especially these down here, you should only do if you don't have a negative there in front of the x. So if you do have a negative, we have to deal with that. So first thing we want to notice is that we're not allowed to take the negative times the negative on the inside. That's not allowed. You can never multiply something inside of the cosine. So instead, we're, we're going to do a different process. This process is going to involve factoring out a negative uh, from this inside here. So here's what that's going to look like. We're going to have y equals negative 3 cosine. I'm going to pull a negative on the outside, factoring a negative out of each one of these things here. You'll get positive 2x and then minus pi over 2. So that would be the, the factored version. We're pulling out the negative, so now what's inside the parenthesis part is now going to be uh, positive. What we're going to do next is we're going to do something that we talked about in a previous section. We're going to use the even odd properties in order to simplify this. Previously in the in other, other section we talked about that cosine of negative t uh, is equal to cosine t. We said that if you have cosine of a negative angle, that's going to give you a positive. We're going to do the same thing right here because we're saying that all this stuff inside the parentheses, that's actually the same thing as a t. So if I have cosine negative t, that means that I'm actually going to turn it into cosine positive t. So for this, I'm going to use this property. So what that property says is that the negative sign that's in here, that cosine negative t, that negative is actually going to go away, and I can rewrite the problem as a positive. Now, if this was a sign in front of here, the difference would be that the sign here in front there would actually come outside and affect that sign and get rid of that minus sign. So if it was a uh, sign graph, we would use the other formula, the other identity, which would be sine negative t equals negative sine t. So that would be the difference. Now in this problem, uh, we, don't, we have a cosine, so the negative just disappears completely, but just know that if, you ha if that was a sign here, a negative would pop on the outside, and that would also take care of the negative there, so it actually would have 3 sine of 2x minus pi over 2. But in this case, just cosine only, it goes away. So here's what my new one will look like. I have negative 3 cosine of 2x minus pi over 2. Okay? And so this negative here does not go away. The negative inside does because of this property. This property says here, if negative on the inside, you simply get rid of it turns into a cosine. So now, the whole entire problem is now going to turn into this. Negative 3 cosine of the positive 2x minus pi over 2. So originally, it was a plus, but we pulled out a minus sign that made it minus in the first place. Now my problem turns into this. Now that it's written in the proper form, I'm ready now to answer these questions. Amplitude would be absolute value negative 3 is going to be 3. My period is 2 pi, 2 pi divided by b, so 2 pi over 2 is going to be pi. My phase shift, opposite sine of this number over b. So opposite sine of negative pi over 2 would be positive pi over 2. We're dividing this by 2. And when I do that, I have pi over 2 times 1 half. You're going to get pi over 4 for your phase shift. This is where the graph is actually going to begin. It begins at positive pi over 4. So I know that I can go ahead and already start my graph here at pi over 4, and then I know that I have to find my four other key points there for that one. So to find that, I need to find my quarter point. So my quarter point, quarter point is going to be a period divided by 4. So in this case, your quarter point is also going to be pi over 4. So for each of these, I'm actually just adding pi over 4 all the way across. So pi over 4 plus pi over 4, that's 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4. Those are my all the other key points that I have here. Notice that if I take 5 pi over 4, subtract pi over 4 from it, I get pi, which is what I should be getting because that means that this is going to be one cycle. Okay, so we have a cosine. There's a uh, negative 3 that's in front, so I have 3 up here, and I have negative 3 down there. I need to start the graph at the amplitude, but not here. I need to start it here because the graph got shifted to the right. So at pi over 4, I need to start that down here at negative 3 because, again, that's the amplitude we have there. It starts down below. Then it'll go to this one, 
up to here, back down to that one, and then finally back down to five pi over four. The graph itself is going to look like this. And again, it does continue in both directions, but uh, this one, we've been, we've been talking about only graphing this one over one period, so that's what we're gonna do uh, for this one. We're graphing it over one period only between pi over four and five pi over four.